Functions are one of the central objects of investigation in mathematics, so understanding how they are expressed and evaluated is of critical importance. Unfortunately, not all functions can be easily defined with one formula. Some functions use different rules on different parts of their domains. Those piecewise defined functions are our topic today. Let's quickly review some definitions needed in a discussion of functions. A function is a set of ordered pairs in which no first coordinate is repeated. The domain of the function is the set of first coordinates of the ordered pairs in the relation, and the range is the set of second coordinates of the ordered pairs in the relation. Now let's look at a few simple examples. We're given a set F consisting of four ordered pairs. The ordered pairs have coordinates a, 2, b, 3, c, 3, d, 5. This set is a function with domain equal to the first coordinates, the set of a, b, c, d, and range, the set r equals 2, 3, and 5. Notice there's no prohibition on repeated second coordinates in the definition of function. The function g of x equals 1 over the quantity x minus 2 is also a function with domain all real x numbers except 2 and range all real y's except 0. Now let's consider piecewise defined functions. Essentially, a piecewise defined function is a function that is defined by different rules on different parts of its domain. Probably the most familiar example of a piecewise defined function is the absolute value function. You will remember that absolute value of x equals x if x is greater than or equal to zero, and absolute value of x equals the opposite of x if x is negative. To graph the function, we use the rule that is appropriate to the part of the domain we are considering. In this case, we graph y equal x when x is greater than or equal to zero, and we graph y equal minus x whenever x is negative. For our next example, let's consider a typical textbook problem. Given a function as defined here, we want to evaluate several values of the function and sketch the graph of the function. Notice that our function is defined as f of x equal x squared when x is strictly less than 2, and as f of x equals 1 over x if x is greater than or equal to 2. So when we evaluate the function, we only need to pay attention to whether the the input is less than or greater than 2 to figure out which rule to use. To compute f of negative 1, we use the top rule since negative 1 is less than 2. So f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared, which equals 1. Similarly, 3 halves is less than 2, so f of 3 halves is 3 halves squared, which equals 9 fourths. To evaluate f of 2, we use the bottom rule. So f of 2 is 1 half. Similarly, since 3 is greater than 2, f of 3 is 1 third. Now we want to sketch a graph of y equal f of x. We draw some axes in a grid. We want to pay particular attention to the input x equal 2. For inputs less than or equal to, I mean, for inputs less than or to the left of 2, we use the squaring function. So we graph the parabola y equal x squared for x strictly less than 2. Note that the squaring function is not used at the input x equal to. We computed that f of 2 is a half, so we have the point 2 comma 1 half on the graph, not the point 2 4. 
For x values greater than 2, we use the reciprocal function 1 over x. For our third and final example, let's consider a slight variation. This time, our function is defined by absolute value of x for x values between plus and minus 1, including minus 1, and by the square root of x for x values between 1 and 4 inclusive. We want to sketch the graph of f and use the graph to state the domain and range of the function. We'll start with the graph, and draw a grid, and then we'll graph absolute value of x for x between plus and minus 1. We include the point negative 1, 1, but we don't include the absolute value to find f of 1. To find f of 1, we use the square root function. So f of 1 is the square root of 1, which is 1, and we fill in the point 1, 1 on the graph. For x values between 1 and 4, we use the square root function. We include the point 4 square root of 4, or 4 comma 2, and this is the entire graph of the function y equal f of x. The domain is the interval from negative 1 to 4, including the endpoints. This is the only x interval for which the function is defined. Similarly, the range is the closed interval from 0 to 2. Only y values from this interval as, are used as outputs for f. It's often useful to consider a graph when looking to state the domain and range of a function.